It's the early 1970s and Guam's tourist industry is taking off. In order to promote Guam as an exotic island similar to Hawaii, Japanese hotel owners contracted Polynesian cultural dance groups to entertain guests. One such hotel was Daiichi, now called Fiesta, and it is here that a young curious hotel employee, hearing about these cultural dances, snuck his way into a dinner show. And what he saw was a sight he never will forget. The colorful costumes, the organization, choreography, the rhythm all entranced him. It was unlike any dance he's ever seen or danced before. The young teenager watching would be perhaps the most significant figure in the Chamorro performing arts community. His name is Frank Rabon, the godfather and first master of Chamorro dance. Uncle or sign of Frank as many of the dance community affectionately call him would be the central figure in starting the modern Chamorro dance movement, which distinguishes itself from other forms of Chamorro dance by centering around recreated pre-contact Chamorro dances. He would inspire numerous individuals to form their very own cultural dance groups as a way to connect with their indigenous past. Today, these pre-contact dances are a big part of Chamorro identity and are commonly performed in public ceremonies. However, despite the current fanfare and acceptance, Make no mistake, Rabon's journey was by no means easy as he would face numerous detractors, criticisms, and outright disrespect by his own community, which to some extent continues to this day. Guahu Sipulan, and in this biographic video, we will explore the life of Frank Rabon and his journey in recreating and re-establishing pre-contact Chamorro dance. <laughs> Francisco Benevente Rabon was born on October 4, 1955, in Guam. He was the seventh child out of ten siblings, and his mother was Rosa Rivera Benevente, familian Lalu and Bobu, and father Jesus Buntugan Rabon, familian Tugan and Kokora. Tragedy would strike the family a few years later, as the mother, Rosa Rabon, unfortunately passed away when Frank was only six years old. This left the father alone to raise the family. Fortunately, the extended family greatly assisted Jesus Rabon in raising the children. Frank Rabon was raised primarily in a Chamorro-speaking household in the village of Barragada. Thus, Chamorro is his first language. It wasn't until he entered San Vicente Catholic School where he began for Formally learning English. His father taught Frank and his siblings to always work as a team. They learn how to fish, grow vegetables, raise livestock, weave, and many other skills at the family ranch in Barragada Heights. Some of Frank's fondest childhood memories include him and his siblings riding bicycles around the village, selling their freshly harvested fruits and vegetables in order to make money to support their father. As a child, Frank always enjoyed dancing, and he would often be the first one to dance at fiestas and parties. He had an uncanny ability to pick up dances. For example, when popular American dances such as The Jerk made its way to Guam in the 60s, all the young people wanted to learn these dances, and Frank's siblings were no exception. While they struggled mightily to get the hang of The Jerk, all Frank needed to do was to watch a single demonstration of the jerk, and he would then rise up from his chair and dance it with ease, much to the envy of his brothers and sisters. After swallowing their pride, his siblings would ask Frank to teach them the jerk and the many other American fad dances so that they could impress their dates at the junior and senior school proms. His father would often boast about Frank's dancing abilities to anyone within earshot at parties. And it wasn't just American fad dances that was being introduced to the island in the 60s. With the lifting of the security clearance policy in 1962, Guam became an attractive site for Japanese investors who saw the potential for tourism. And by 1971, there were four main Japanese-owned hotels. Guam Tokyo, which no longer exists and became a property of PIC, Continental Hotel, now PIC, Daiichi Hotel, now Fiesta Resort, and Fujita. 
the marketing strategy was to market Guam as a cheaper alternative to Waikiki, Hawaii. And this was true, as a plane ticket from Japan to Guam was a fraction of the cost than a ticket from Japan to Hawaii. Therefore, in order to create the exotic island look, the hotel owners contracted a professional Polynesian cultural dance group from Hawaii, known as Namele Okeleo, directed by husband and wife duo Titu and Carol. And it was at Hotel Daiichi that the young part-time employee, Frank Rabon, first experienced a cultural dance show that was beyond anything familiar to him. This sparked a curiosity in him. Soon, he ended up joining a dance studio formed by one of the Hawaiian dancers, Joseph Kumahula Janelle Kawa. Janelle Kawa was part of Namele Okeleo, and when her dance contract ended, instead of returning back to Hawaii like the vast majority of the dancers did, she decided to stay on Guam. The reason is because she saw business opportunity, as Guam lacked any type of cultural dance schools or companies. And knowing that Hilton Hotel would open soon, which it did in 1972, Janelle formed a dance studio composed of locals in order to bid for the dance contract. And it is here that perhaps one of the most important conversations in the genesis of modern Chamorro dance took place. One day, Janelle took one of her newly recruited dancer, the young Frank Rabone aside, and asked him, Frank, do the Chamorros have any kind of native dances? The young teen looked at her with a confused expression and replied, Well, Janelle, the only thing I know is the Bailin Butsu, the Cha-Cha, the Jitterbug. That's not Chamorro dance, Janelle exclaimed. That was brought in by outsiders. Well, that was what I was brought up into. That's what I know, replied Frank. Janelle looked at him and said, No, I'm pretty sure your people chanted like us. I'm pretty sure your people had ceremonies like us. I'm pretty sure your people had dances like us. For the life of me, Janelle, I'm sorry, I can't answer that question. And it was this conversation with Janelle that sparked a deep fire within Rabon to seek out more about his indigenous heritage. In order to contextualize and understand Frank's response to Janelle about how he basically lacked any knowledge of Chamorro dance and culture before the Spanish, we must understand one important concept about Chamorro dance at the time, which is that the pre-contact Chamorro dances that are now a fixture of Chamorro dance and identity today did not exist at that time. In fact, pre-contact dances were not even in the collective imagination of the Chamorro people. Rather, what Chamorros knew and danced at the time was either colonial-influenced Spanish-style Chamorro dances such as the Bailin Butsu or popular American dances like the Jerk and Jitterbug. And these dances were primarily learned and performed in social settings, like at a fiesta. As implied already, there were no Chamorro dance schools or studios that taught Chamorro cultural dance. Therefore, Frank, his siblings, and pretty much everyone on the island were only exposed to colonial influence and popular American dances. And this is a direct result of Chamorros being colonized for more than 300 years by Spain and now America. Furthermore, the public education system was primarily run by white Americans and was largely Eurocentric in nature. Students were taught the U.S. Constitution, Abraham Lincoln, and capitals of states, and so on, rather than about Harau or regional history. This, combined with the general lack of information on pre-contact Chamorros at the time, which is widely available today, made the vast majority of Chamorros not aware or knowledgeable of an indigenous past that existed prior to the Spanish. Rabon danced professionally under Janelle's group Uilani o Polynesia for a while at the Hilton Hotel starting in 1973. In that same year, tragedy struck as his father, Jesus Rabon, the single father of 10 children, who taught Frank and his siblings traditional skills and to work as a team, who would brag about Frank's dancing abilities at parties, passed away. Frank was only 17 at the time, 
who recently graduated high school, and his father's passing had a profound effect on him. In 1976, Frank went off island in order to further his college education. He would also simultaneously continue his research on indigenous dance. For example, when he was attending college in Washington State, he gravitated towards the Polynesian community, recognizing similar cultural traits to Chamorro. He also furthered his education on Polynesian dances in Hawaii and Polynesian communities in Oregon, Washington, and California. Upon Rabon's return to Guam in 1983, he became active again in the entertainment business, performing at the Pacific Islands Hotel, PIC. He was also asked by a former dance friend to assist in the teachings of cultural dancing to young local kids interested in learning. After assisting her for eight months, she requested that he take over the group because she was returning back to Hawaii. This was the origins of Guma Tatatonu, the first Chamorro cultural dance house, and the beginning of his life's dedication to recreating and re-establishing pre-contact Chamorro dance and chant. Many of his first students were his nieces and nephews. Rabon also met former legislative speaker Carlos Taitano, who significantly helped Rabon recreate Chamorro dance. Speaker Taitano was a well-educated man who was one of the first Chamorros to do significant research on pre-contact Chamorro cultural heritage. The first official Guam Fest Pack task force requested Taitano to prepare a script in order to tell the story of Chamorro indigenous history through song and dance for the upcoming 4th Festival of Pacific Arts in 1984 to be held in New Caledonia. The Festival of Pacific Arts, or FESPAC for short, was a regional Pacific festival held every four years since 1972, with the purpose to preserve and develop various local art forms as well as providing the occasion for Pacific Islanders to meet, share, and celebrate their cultural heritage. Taitano introduced Rabon to his research findings on pre-contact Chamorro history, which helped Rabon affirm his belief that Chamorros existed before Spanish colonization. Together, Rabon and Taitano created a Chamorro presentation for the 1985 Fest Pack in Tahiti. The fourth Fest Pack was originally to be held in 1984 New Caledonia, but due to civil unrest in New Caledonia, it was cancelled and changed to the following year in Tahiti. And this Fest Pack was to be the first instance that recreated dances and chants of the pre-contact era were showcased to a large audience, as the informal Guam delegations in the 1976 and 1980 Fest Packs performed modern Western dances and songs, many of which were sung in English. Over the years, as Rabon learned more about his pre-contact heritage from archival research and materials, he would create dances and chants reflecting aspects on how pre-contact Chamorros were described and depicted. For example, the Bailin Uritao, Young Men's Dance, is based on 17th century descriptions of young men competing, testing their strength, who carried sticks called tunas and lived in bachelor houses. The costumes of the dancers also reflected historical accounts, with men wearing sati and women adorning their heads with flowers. One important concept to note is that Rabon never claimed that his recreated dances are authentic or exactly how pre-contact Chamorros danced. In fact, he has stated numerous times that his recreated dances are only educated guesses at what pre-contact dances might have been like. Although the dances, costumes, and chants are created based on historical documentation and other sources of inspiration, what's important, however, is the function. Rabon used the recreated dances to help Chamorros visualize, participate, connect, and to take pride in their indigenous cultural heritage. Rabon's recreated dances were not initially widely accepted and faced major criticism by his own community. For example, many of the elders blasted him, expressing the sentiment that that's not Chamorro dance. Real Chamorro dance is the butsu or sotis. None of us ever wear the sutti and jumped around hitting sticks. 
and Rabon was accused of being on drugs or mentally ill, and that his dances were Carolinian or Polynesian rather than Samoru. Even Rabon's own grandmother expressed strong disapproval and thought that he was on drugs. Yet, despite all these criticisms, Rabon did not let the constant barrage of criticism to stop him. Rather, he persisted on the journey to re-establishing a Chamorro dance tradition that has been lost for more than 300 years. You might be wondering what made Rabon continue and endure through the typhoons of criticism. While on the surface it's tempting to reduce it all to his love for the culture, it's deeper than that. For those who dive deep beneath the surface and personally know him, one of his life's anchors, which grounds him against even the strongest of life's typhoons, are his children. And by children, I'm not referring to his dancers or people, but to his dogs. Remember, Frank is only human. He does get frustrated, he does get upset, and he certainly does get sad. Whenever Frank has a bad day, whether it's due to drama within or outside the dance community, he can always turn to his children to provide him comfort and support. Frank would go on to accomplish and popularize pre-contact Chamorro dance forms. He would be the director and choreographer of the Guam delegation for several fest packs and other Pacific festivals. He pioneered the first Chamorro cultural and dance program at in Alahan High School in 1991. And although in the beginning Frank had much difficulty getting young men to enroll in the class due to the perception that dancing shirtless in a set B was considered strange and often teased, the program eventually became popular amongst students, and similar other cultural dance programs followed suit in other schools. Over time, as more people joined these cultural dance programs, and as Rabon's cultural dance groups performed at public or private ceremonies, the pre-contact dances start to become more and more legitimate and accepted in the community. In 1998, Frank was finally recognized as the first master of Chamorro dance and received the Lifetime Achievement Award by the Council of the Arts and Humanities. Imagine, after more than 25 years since his Hawaiian dance instructor planted the seed in him, 15 years since the beginning of the first Chamorro cultural dance house, Guma Tatatanu, and facing unending criticism from his own community. All the blood, sweat, and tears that he placed in his work was officially acknowledged. In that same year, through his partnership with Carlos Taitano, Rabon founded the nonprofit organization Pa'a Tatatanu to further the mission of cultural preservation, perpetuation, promotion, and education of the Chamorro culture. Not only dance, but songs, chants, weavings, language, values, history, and so on. In 2011, he founded the organization Pera y Probetsuni Tautauta Inc., or PIPIT, which replaced Pa'a Tautautanu. PIPIT currently umbrellas all recognized Guma Siha on Guam, CNMI, United States, and Japan. In 2015, Rabon received an honorary doctorate degree, Master of Micronesia Creative and Traditional Knowledge at the University of Guam. And as of 2021, while Rabon has taken a step back, he continues to provide leadership to the Chamorro cultural dance community. What Frank Rabon accomplished is legacy defining. The establishment of Chamorro cultural dance represents one of the single most significant feat that any Chamorro has ever achieved. Imagine, a young Chamorro from a humble background, only knowing colonial influence Chamorro and American dances, who snuck into a Polynesian cultural performance at a hotel and was mesmerized by the dance, who then joined a dance studio where his Hawaiian dance instructor inspired him to seek out his indigenous heritage. Rabon founded the first Chamorro cultural dance house, Tatautanu. He faced an unprecedented level of criticism from his own community. At any time, Rabon could have capitulated under the immense pressure and criticism. And Chamorro dance as we know it today would have been significantly different. However, he didn't give up. He set out a goal and let nothing stop him from re-establishing pre-contact Chamorro dance. 
Whether you love him or hate him, you cannot deny his impact towards the community. He has provided a vehicle for thousands of Chamorros to express and connect themselves to their indigenous heritage through the movement of the body and chant. He has inspired dozens of others, many of whom were his former students, to form their own cultural dance groups and continue the dance tradition. He has changed the economic landscape. While before, the tourist industry only hired Polynesian dance groups, today, Chamorro dance groups are also hired. Rabon is by no means perfect. Don't expect him to be. He is by no means immune to criticism. However, one must acknowledge that he established Chamorro dance as traditional knowledge and practice that represents our history and our way of life, which will last throughout the generations. This is the legacy of Frank Rabone, the godfather of Chamorro cultural dance.